Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am so excited. We are at Willow Ridge High to motivate and teach the girls about being a high value woman in today's society. Catch up with me later on. Your guest speaker today is a South African actress, <laughs> television star, businesswoman, socialite, wife, and mother, Mrs. Mops Honey. You have no idea how excited I am to be here this morning. And I feel so honored that I can be able to come here and share a little bit of my knowledge with such amazing and inspiring young ladies like you. It's such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All right, ladies. So. Before I start, I would like to formally introduce myself. My name is Mbomi Mopatlane, or better known as Mrs. Mops. <laughs> From the hit series, The Real Housewives of <laughs> And I know if you guys are thinking, is there going to be a season three because it's been like a long wait? Well, the answer is, we're just waiting for boring Durban to get out of the way. Because <laughs> you know, we have to represent how Day, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ladies, today I'd like to share with you how to be a high value woman in today's society. Society puts so much pressure in young women like yourselves. But I'd like to tell you that actually, there's no pressure, there's no rules to these things. You just do you the way you do you. But obviously you have to follow some type of protocol, not to offend, not to do this, there's always so much that we as ladies have to worry about. But a bit of background for myself, I feel like 20 years ago, 20 years ago sounds like a long time, but it wasn't that long. I was sitting where you were, and I wish that I had somebody who had come to the podium and told me about things about being a woman of substance, being a woman of grace and style, how to look after yourself, how to dress correctly. In my day, we never had that, but you guys are so lucky that in today's times, you can have that. You've got information at your fingertips, you can Google, you can look anywhere, and you can have that. The first topic I'm gonna to start with, though, is, let's see, show of hands, who has a cell phone? Everybody, right? We all own it. We all have cell phones. So obviously the first topic for me would be social media. I'm lucky because I grew up in the 90s and I could do whatever I want and no one could record anything <laughs> and post it on social media. But in today's times it's difficult for you ladies because you can be out and about, you can be posting, I mean, you can be having fun, and innocently, somebody is just recording you, and there it goes out, onto the internet, there to stay. 
Now the dangers of social media, and social media is, is great, but it can also have a downside to that. Now what you post, ladies, you have to be super careful about what you post. Sexy pictures, news for your man, and you're just like, hey, you know? That actually stays. As much as you delete it, it never really gets deleted. So my full-time job besides television is that I work at a cyber security company. And huge um, companies like your ESCOM, your City Power, CIPC, your Standard Bank, your FNBs, they get hacked. And they come to companies like myself to ask for help. In the cybersecurity space, we can access anything. So if you think you've deleted a picture and it's gone, we actually can't get it, it's not gone. So you have to be careful, ladies, about what you post on social media because also at the end of the day, your social media is like a 30 second movie trailer to your life. It introduces you. When somebody opens your page, it tells us what Sophie's about. Sophie likes cats, she likes movies, she likes going out. Immediately, in 30 seconds, we know exactly what you're about. Now, if you have a stalker, and uh, I've been a victim of stalkers, <laughs> people following you from weird accounts, you try and block this account and then pops up from another account and you try and block and then he pops up from another account. Yeah. So you must be careful about that, ladies. Always, always make sure that whatever you post is something that you're not going to regret five years later down the line when you maybe want to be a serious influencer because that, can, that is a career nowadays, you know. Or oh, when you want to get into the business world. What happens is when you want to get into the business world, not only do they look at your CV nowadays, they look at your social media. Yes. And so it represents you. So you need to be very careful about what you post. You also don't want to be oversharing with pictures and your personal life. When you go out, what I do is I never post in real time. Never ever post in real time. When you're at a restaurant or at a party or wherever you are, post the next day or post when you get home. Because what happens is when somebody is watching your stories, oh, they can see that Mrs. Mops is at Tasha's and she's with Latavo and she's with Crystal. And they come, they will come and it's, it's gonna be like, oh, okay, how did you know I was here? Because you posted. So what I do now, for, to be safe and for, your, for you girls to also be safe is never post in real time. Always post when you get home, when you're safe or post the next day. Confuse the enemies, ladies. Yes. So, um, I was talking about stalkers and I'm gonna share with you what happened to me one time. I was with a friend of mine and obviously I was posting in real time because you know other friends were also posting in real time and this particular stalker of mine found me, walked up to our table and said, you've been ignoring me in the DMs, I know, you've blocked me but here I am and I wanted to tell you that I have got the biggest crush on you. It was so scary. It was like so scary. And I know this has also happened to huge celebrities like Kim Kardashian. One time she was in Paris and her sisters went out to a fashion show and then later on they went out to a nightclub. And Kim is sitting in her hotel room and she's on social media, she's telling everybody that she's in her hotel room alone. Little did she know that the people who are planning to rob her have been following her for two years. 
and this was their chance. And they found her in the hotel room, and she got dropped for over $10 million worth of things. So this just is a lesson to all of us. Whether you're a celebrity, or whether you're a beautiful young lady like yourself, is that please be careful and protect yourself on social media. Make your account private. Don't accept friend request from a weird account because you never know who's requesting. And just make sure that you don't post anything that could um, endanger you in the future. So that is my social media advice to you ladies. We love social media. It does a lot for us, but also there is a lot of creeps out there. Your reputation. Steve Jobs once said, your brand is the most single important investment you can make. So much depends on your reputation. Guard it with your life. So that is your reputation. No one can break it. You are who you are. Make sure that you keep your reputation clean. Make sure that you keep your reputation pure and you go a long way. Dressing. Who loves fashion? Show of hands. <laughs> wow, that's not everybody. Who doesn't love fashion? <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> We're not the same. No one actually has to follow trends. But I love this quote by Tom Ford. Tom Ford once said, Dressing well is a form of good manners. I think when you walk into the room, the first 10 seconds, people look at you and they're like, oh, okay. They can already see who you are and what you're about just by how you dress and even before you open your mouth. But because you girls are at school Monday to Friday, and of course you have to adhere to a dress code, you guys are dressed well today. You're in your blazers. You've got clean shirts, your uniform is ironed, you're nice and crisp. So this right now, what I see in this hall, is a form of good manners. And thank you to you. You look amazing in your uniform. But the basic of dressing well as a lady, and this is a tip that I would love to give all of you, the basic of anything before anything starts, like before every, somebody builds a house in construction, the basic is the foundation. Now what is the foundation with us ladies? Sorry? What did you guys say in the back there? I heard somebody who was right. Deodorant, okay, yes, definitely, deodorant. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> it's deodorant, but I was going to say the basic, the foundation of that is underwear. Underwear is very important. And let me tell you what Coco Chanel once said. Coco Chanel once said, underwear is my next love after clothing. I think it is what is worn underneath that really inspires a woman to feel beautiful in her clothes. That is the inner secret of glamour. Underwear. And do you know what? I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say that it doesn't have to match, but it has to match. <laughs> It has to match. <laughs> a bra. A nice fitted bra over a shirt makes a difference. It really does make a difference. If you wear a shirt without a bra, there's a huge difference. But if you wear a bra and then a shirt on top, your posture becomes nicer, the girls are supported, and you feel great. Right? Your your panties. Your panties shouldn't, you know, it should be cotton panties. Cotton is a nice natural fiber, you know, so that your biscuit can be able to breathe, you know. <laughs> you 
needs to breathe, honey. <laughs> um, and these days, you can have things like your bra size measured. It's for free. It's a free service. You can go to Cotton On. You can go to wherever, wh whatever bras and things, whatever underwear shop you can go to. You can get measured for free and you can get to know your correct bra size. There's no need for you to wear a bra that's too small for you. There's no need for you to wear a bra that's too big for you. The service comes for free. Personal hygiene. I know the ladies there that that said the first thing is deodorant, which I really do like. Because when we get to personal hygiene as ladies, it is really, really, really important. You know, um, Auntie Flo, I call her Auntie Flo. She comes to visit us once a month. And Auntie Flo stays. And she overstays her welcome. You know, so be ready for Auntie Flo when she comes once a month. You guys are lucky because you've got cell phones and you can download an app that tells you when your period is coming next, when your period is going to end. I mean, myself even now, in my 30s, I have downloaded that app. My app is called the PC app, period calendar app. And it tells me all the time when my next period is due. And it also tells me when to take my next contraception, when um, I'm due for my gynae appointment. It reminds me to drink water. I wish I had that back in the day when I was your age, because what we used to do, we used to actually physically go to the calendar and count the days, you know, as to when your period is going to come. So you guys are lucky because you can download the app and the app can tell you from this day to this day, this is your period and drink water and take your pills and do this and do that. So you've got it at your fingertips. So there's no need for you ladies to be caught off guard. We must, we're too fabulous to be caught off guard. There's no way. You must always be ready. You know, you must always be on your toes. Even Auntie Flo can't catch us sleeping, honey. There's no way. Always carry with you an extra tampon or an extra pad if you use pads. And the school also does provide, which is amazing. So if you feel like you need something, you can come to the school and they can provide for you. No, you can't have any leaks or any accidents. We can't afford that. We are just way, way too fabulous for that. We need to shower. You need to have a routine. Watch your favorite YouTuber. Watch what she does. Have your own morning routine or evening routine, whichever one you prefer, but usually on your monthly cycle, you just need to practice very, very, very good hygiene. It's very, very important. And then when Auntie Flo is gone, we're back to living life. I <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> you also need to have a checklist as well and make sure that everything, you've got your products, you've got your face wash, you've got your moisturizer, all the toiletries that you need. You know, when it does come down to hygiene, a lot of it has to do also with diet. You are what you eat. Yes. You are that hot dog that you ate last night. <laughs> you know, whenever you eat junk and whenever you don't drink water, it has to come out in another way. And that comes out through body odor. It comes out through your menstrual blood. It comes out through your sweat. It just comes out. We can smell that you had curry on Monday. We can smell it. We can. We can smell that you had garlic last night. You know? Eat clean, ladies. Or try and eat clean. You know, people exaggerate and they're like, oh, I'm going on a seven-day cleanse. 
and I'm going to a fat farm and I'm going to lose a kilogram and I'm going to make sure that, no, no. There's no need for that. Water, water, that's all you need. Water will detoxify you. Water is in its purest form, will just make sure that you are clean. So drink a lot of water. Eight or more to eight or more glasses a day. Try and eat clean. I mean, yes, of course, we can have a cheat day here and there, but try and eat clean and try and exercise and make sure that your body is taken care of because you don't want to have an odor, no matter how much perfume you put on, but your natural odor does overpower that. So we need to constantly be clean and being clean starts from the inside out. All right, ladies, in closing, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me today. And I'm open to any questions. I'm gonna take about five questions, quick ones from anybody who wants to ask anything. And yeah, I love you and I'm so proud of you. Keep going, ladies. From grade eight to matrix, keep going. This, this here, what you're sitting here right now, it doesn't last forever. You are gonna go out into the real world. You're going to make an impact. You are going to be that girl, that, that girl that you think you are. You are going to be that girl. So go out there and make a difference. <laughs> I love you guys and please if you have questions just raise your hand but I'm only gonna take like five quick ones yes As a woman, how do I bring confidence in my own body, personally? Okay, so as a woman, how do I bring confidence in my own body, personally? I am a mother of three, right? And with pregnancy, I don't want to say it ruins your body, but it does change your body. Carrying a life does change your body. And for the longest time, I had the lowest, lowest self-esteem about my body. I thought I was fat, I had stretch marks, I had cellulite. And then one day I just said to myself, wow, but you just, your body just gave life. You just gave life to these three human beings. You are a superwoman, you know? I had a talk the other day with um, women who are much older than you, who are mothers, and I said, ladies, if you can fix it later on, fix it. So that's what I did. Not because I was now unhappy, I had already gained my confidence back, but I said, hey, I'm still young, I'm still a hot mom, I want to get my boobs done, so I got the girls done, you know? <laughs> got the girls done and I must say my confidence was at a hundred but now it's at a thousand yes wow that's a good question how did I ensure that I was successful in a male-dominated industry. Wow. I didn't change myself. When I walk into a boardroom, I don't walk like a male and act like one of the guys. No, because I'm not one of the guys. I am feminine. I exude feminine energy. And you take me as I am. Because what I bring to the table is a lot. And what I tell these business guys is that when they say to me, Oh yeah, Mrs. Mobs, but you are in entertainment. What do you bring to the table? And I say, Jance, I am the table.
What empowers me as a businesswoman? Wow. What empowers me as a businesswoman is my passion to bring other women up with me. Because I always feel that when you are up on that level, you need to bring others up with you. It is so scary, actually, how few black women are in, for example, I'm in the cybersecurity industry, and it is a white, male-dominated industry. And cybersecurity is a growing industry that is huge because that's all we do is we're on our laptops, we're on our cell phones all the time. So what empowers me is to bring other black girls up to be in this space and to dominate the space. Yes. Wow. One word. Um, what do I think is my my greatest accomplishment? Okay. My greatest accomplishment is I know this is very like oh. It's so obvious, but it's my kids. <laughs> it's my three little kids. Yes. Okay. How do I separate my personal and my professional life? When I get home, I shut down. I don't look at emails. I don't answer SMSs. I don't take work calls. I've got two different phones. One for work and one for personal. When I am home, I immediately turn into mom. I'm not Mrs. Mops, the CEO. I'm not Mrs. Mops, the, bus the businesswoman. No, I am mommy and I am wifey, and that's what I focus on. So yeah, I separate the two. Looking back now, um, the advice I'd give myself as a teenage girl is it's not as bad as it seems. It gets better. It gets better. When I was your age, I always, I never liked school. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I never did. I wanted to get out of here as fast as I could. But looking back, I would have said to myself, Bumi, girl, wait it actually gets better. Yeah. One last one. Um, I wanted to ask you personally, do you think that you would make more money in your corporate business or in your entertainment? Absolutely. Is there more money in corporate than in entertainment? Yes. Especially um, talking from a South African aspect. Unfortunately, we're not like Hollywood. Hollywood has you can, you can be like a YouTube reality TV star and you will be paid. You can be like a bully in two weeks or like whatever. But unfortunately in South Africa, the entertainment industry really, really is struggling. I mean, when I was approached to do Housewives, the first thing I asked is, how much is it? <laughs> and they were like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, 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 actually, how much? And the money was, it was peanuts. It's peanuts. And it's just so sad because you compare yourself, you compare the job that you're currently in, and then you compare it to the entertainment industry, and it's like, how do these actors live? How do they survive? A lot of them, guys, and I'm, and I'm exposing them, but a lot of them, it's a fake it until you make it type of world. The dresses are borrowed. The weaves are borrowed, yes. They hire makeup artists and sometimes they don't even pay them. It's, it's a struggle. It really is a struggle. And that's why I say with you guys, I don't want you to feel the pressure of trying to keep up with uh, a Kifilu and Mabota or a Sarah Langa or who, who's a big influencer? I don't know. Yes, Bonang and who? And that's this way. 
don't. Don't try and choke yourself and try and keep up with that because a lot of that stuff, it's not real. They borrow stuff. They get, they borrow cars. They, they'll go to like a Mercedes Benz and they'll be like, hi, I'm Pumi Mops and if, if you borrow me your Mercedes Benz for two hours, I'll post it on my Instagram because I've got one million followers. And they'll pretend as if it's theirs. It's, it's a lot. Do not put pressure on yourself to keep up because they themselves are keeping up as well. So don't do it. Don't fall for that pressure because you will get depressed. You will look at this fake happy life on Instagram. No one posts their disappointments. They really don't. If you take an L, no one posts that, oh yeah, today I took an L and I'm not, you know? No. They post the happy stuff. They post the trips. They post this. It's not real. So don't succumb to the pressure. Just do you. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> amazing today to see and inspire the girls I myself feel very very inspired please join me on my next episode and I'll see you next time bye